a car was reported stolen after it was found in the Red Arroyo early Sunday morning. How it got there has police puzzled. San Angelo police were dispatched to the S. Chaboran Street bridge over the Red Arroyo, approximately in the 2500 block, early Sunday morning at 8.06 a.m. to investigate why a 2014 Nissan Altima was laying upside down, partially submerged in the water below the bridge. According to San Angelo Police Department traffic investigator Brian Bilsma, the incident is being investigated as a hit and run. Police could find no one around the car this morning. Shannon's Air One helicopter was utilized to search for a crash victim in the thick brush around the Red Arroyo. So far, the police have come up empty. There are no known crash victims. Bill Smith said police contacted the registered owner of the car. She informed police the Nissan was supposed to be parked in front of her house. She said the car was stolen. According to Bill Smith, the traffic investigation has revealed the car was traveling southbound on Shitbourne, hit the guardrail and fell down the embankment into the water. About half the car was lying in the Red Arroyo waterway before home motors retrieved it. If anyone has any information that will help police solve the question of why the car was found in the Red Arroyo, call dispatch at 325-657-4315. Model. 2013 plus Cyan FRS and Subaru BRZ Vehicle type Sports Coupe History description Toyota and Subaru teamed up in creation of the back-to-basic sports models, the Cyan FRS and Subaru BRZ, which hit the market in 2012 for model year 2013. These machines offered up 200 horses, rear-wheel drive, and a six-speed transmission in the driver's choice of manual or automatic with paddle shift. Today, few-year-old units are available affordably, many of which are covered by remaining factory warranty. If you're after a sensible world-class sporting experience from a lightly used ride, the FRS and BRZ are worth a closer look. Featured content included navigation, an upscale central media interface, Bluetooth, heated seats, automatic climate control and fold-down rear seats. Push-button start, xenon lighting and sports pedals could also be had. All units got a 2-liter 4-cylinder D4S boxer engine. The compact power plant works best when spinning fast, flaunts a red line of 7,500 RPMs, and generates around 200 horsepower depending on the year. What owners like? Owners say they love the fuel mileage, fun to drive factor, looks and feel, and the sporty shifter and clutch combination offered by the FRS and BRZ. Many say these machines offer a just right amount of space and size on board, with a cabin that sports car snug, without being cramped. What owners dislike? Common gripes included a small trunk opening, tight rear seat space, and the lack of a central armrest for front seat occupants. Though the FRS and BRZ are not meant to be hot rods, many owners wish for more power, or a higher output engine option, which wasn't available. The test drive. Remember that the average shopper is best to stick to a unit that hasn't been modified by its seller in any way as various modifications can adversely affect the reliability and durability of the vehicle, or even void its warranty. Owners have outlined a commonly reported issue with sporadic idle, possibly accompanied by a warning light, check engine light, CEL, or a violent shaking sensation from the engine at idle. The issue has, in some cases, been remedied with the application of new hardware and software that control the engine's variable valve timing system, though owners report varying levels of success in having the problem remedied. If the unit you purchase develops this problem later, perhaps toward the end of its warranty, be sure to have your dealer service manager document it as soon as possible, to speed any applicable warranty claims. Have the ECU of any model you're considering scanned via its OBD port and a diagnostic tool, whether by a technician or via a handheld unit brought along for the test drive. 
Engine trouble codes revealed by this diagnostic procedure can reveal potential issues with a bad speed sensor or fuel pump, for instance. Further, note that trouble code P0328 after a diagnostic scan, possibly accompanied by limited performance caused by engagement of a protective limp mode, could reference a bad knock sensor that needs replacement. Remember that not all engine trouble codes will cause a CEL to illuminate. Owners have reported various noises from the vehicle driveline, including a thump from the rear end when putting the vehicle in gear as it comes to a stop, this is considered normal, and a range of rattles or light grinding sounds from the transmission or shifter. Provided the sounds are fairly quiet, and not accompanied by any unwelcome sensations or heavy vibrations slash harshness felt through the drive line, most are considered to be normal, and shouldn't be cause for alarm. If you're worried, have a technician investigate, but remember that all vehicle drive lines make noises like these, though they're typically muffled by extensive sound deadening, which is applied more sparingly to sports cars like these. Other checks should include it a look for rear tail light condensation, and clunking noises during low speed, sharp turning maneuvers, perhaps while turning into a parking space. The latter could indicate a worn out suspension part, like a bushing, sway bar link, or ball joint. Shoppers are also advised to have a mechanic inspect the front timing chain cover for signs of oil leakage or seepage, especially on earlier models. If any is detected, the solution is often to install revised washers, fasteners and sealant. Finally, a loud popping sound from the rear shelf area may be the result of a bad fit between two metal panels, or a bad spot weld, which allows the metal segments to contact each other and cause noise. The remedy is for a technician to apply some spray grease between the offending metal panels and then to squeeze them back together. The verdict? In all, the FRS and BRZ seem free of any serious or worrisome issues so far, with most issues reported by owners being fairly easy to fix, electronic in nature, and easy to detect. Add confidence to your purchase decision with a highly recommended pre-purchase inspection of a non-modified model, and buy confidently. There's a new version of the Nissan GTR in New Zealand. But that's not the most exciting thing I have to tell you, in fact, the GTR is simply the super fast poster boy for the real announcement, that Nismo is now officially on sale in NZ. If you have no idea what I am talking about, then hang your head in shame and wait patiently and can try deference while I explain. Nismo is an abbreviation of Nissan Motorsport International Limited, so it should probably be Nismo only, but that probably sounds too Italian, which is the in-house tuning, motorsport and performance division of Nissan. Nismo came about in 1984 after Nissan merged its two motorsport divisions, with the idea of focusing on sports car racing, while also providing support for teams competing in the Japanese domestic F3 series. Since then Nismo has competed successfully in everything ranging from Japanese domestic series, like the All Japan Sports Prototype Championship, right through to Le Mans 24-hour race, the FIA GT1 World Championship, as well as being an engine supplier in the FIA World Endurance Championship and the European Le Mans series. In 1988 Nismo built its first car, the Source. Based on a weird single-seater concept Nissan built for the 1987 Tokyo Motor Show, for a one-make racing series and at the same time also helped develop the revived Skyline GTR, yes, the mighty R32 Godzilla, and later built 500 GTR Nismo cars required to homologate the GTR for Group A. Alongside its motorsport efforts, Nismo also designs and manufactures aftermarket performance parts for Nissan's, as well as tuning the living daylights out of Nissan's on its own. Possibly just for fun. Anyway, Nismo has quickly and quietly built a deeply hallowed reputation among those who like hot Nissan's, and ridiculous speed in general, with those folk who like going sideways noisily particularly appreciating their black magic. 
so it makes no small sense that Nissan harnessed that popularity and hopes some of the sexy excitement rubs off on the rest of their range, much in the way Mercedes-Benz, BMW and Audi have done with their in-house tuning operations, AMG, M and RS, now known as Audi Sport. The first car off the Nismo rank in NZ is the most iconic of them all, and a direct descendant of the car that Nismo helped make into a legend all those years ago, the mighty GTR. This is no GTR with a fancy wing and some stickers, although there are stickers, this is a comprehensively Nismo twig beast with a hand-built engine that inherits the turbochargers from the GT3 racing car, a Nismo ECU, a high-flow fuel pump and a modified cooling system. This sees the output jump from the 419 kilowatts and 637 newton meters of the standard car to 441 kilowatts and 652 newton meters. Which is enough, really. But it isn't just the engine that Nismo has fiddled around with, there is also Nismo tuned suspension with hollow stabilizer bars, 20 inch super lightweight alloy wheels with GTR specific NR1 spec tires, the same used for the GTR's record Nurburgring run, a bonded body for increased stiffness, carbon fiber back for car waist seats, a carbon fiber front bumper that is 30% lighter than the standard one, a carbon fiber boot lid that is 43% lighter and wider front guards to accommodate the monster tires. All of this comes at a cost, however, with the GTR Nismo listing at a colossal $308,000. Yes, that's $103,000, or three Nissan Jukes, more than a standard GTR. But it is one hell of a car. Brutally fast while also remaining ridiculously easy to drive slowly, the GTR does come across as a bit video gamey and all too easy, but the amount of technology at work is constantly amazing and deeply impressive. Feeling all that clever tech keeping the car pointing in the right direction and hanging on to the road is a rather remarkable experience. While it lacks the tactility and suddenly of something simpler with RWD and with less tech, the feeling of utterly bulletproof confidence and sheer ability is extremely addictive. But Nismo isn't all about the GTR, and the second Nismo car to land locally will be the 370Z. Not as comprehensively tweaked as a GTR, the 370Z won't be anywhere near as ferociously pricey either, with an expected price around 20% higher than the standard 370Z, which starts at $59,990. Nissan NZ boss John Manley, is tight-lipped about what else might be coming, but said that the idea was for the entire range to be touched in some way by Nismo and, when pressed, admitted that a Nismo tweaked Navara would suit the local lineup nicely. With the advent of a Mercedes-Benz Ute, and the almost obligatory AMG version, HSV's entry into the Ute segment and various V6 power plants from VW and Ford creeping under Ute bonnets, a powered-up Nismo tweaked Navara could be an absolute winner.